Welcome to Holy Trinity Church, Stratford-upon-Avon, for this, the fifth Sunday of Lent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. As God's people, we have gathered. As we set our worship table with candles, a Bible, but no cross, because you'll notice our crosses are all covered in purple for this time of the Christian season. We say together, Jesus came among us. He was one of us. Christ came to show us the way. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. So we continue our Lenten journey, and this week we're looking at sacrifice, particularly the sacrifice of Jesus for us. Our first hymn is When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. We have our prayer of preparation. Jesus, you made the way for us to come and worship the Father. As we see your sacrifice, lead us in the way of the wilderness, the way of the cross, the way that leads to eternal life. Amen. Now our time of penitence, we prepare our hearts and minds as we think of the things that we have not done and should have done and the things we did that we wish we hadn't. Sometimes we feel like we're walking through wilderness. Jesus, we choose to walk with you. When our spirits feel dry, help us to trust in your spirit. 
Jesus, we choose to walk with you. Fasting seems difficult, prayers seem unanswered. Jesus, we choose to walk with you. The world howls like wild animals all around us. Jesus, we choose to walk with you. We can choose to worry or to trust you to provide. Jesus, we choose to walk with you. Temptation is everywhere. Doubts can overwhelm us. Jesus, we choose to walk with you. You long to transform us with wilderness worship. Jesus, we choose to walk with you. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with heartfelt repentance and true faith turn to him. Have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning's Bible reading from Isaiah 53 is a visual presentation. And this will be followed by the choir singing for us.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. At that time, Herod, the ruler of Galilee, heard about Jesus. He is really John the Baptist who has come back to life, he told his officials. That is why he has the power to perform miracles. For Herod had earlier ordered John's arrest and he had chained and put him in prison. He had done this because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. For some time, John the Baptist had told Herod, it isn't right for you to be married to Herodias. Herod wanted to kill him, but he was afraid of the Jewish people because they considered John to be a prophet. On Herod's birthday, the daughter of Herodias danced in front of the whole group. And Herod was so pleased that he promised her, I swear that I will give you anything you ask for. At her mother's suggestion, she asked him, Give me here and now the head of John the Baptist on a dish. The king was sad, but because of the promise he had made, in front of all his guests, he gave orders that her wish be granted. So he had John beheaded in prison. The head was brought in on a dish and given to the girl, who took it to her mother. John the disciples came and carried away his body and buried it. Then they went and told Jesus. When Jesus heard the news about John, he left there in a boat and went to a lonely place by himself. The people heard about it 
So they left their towns and followed him by land. And Jesus got out of the boat, and when he saw the large crowd, his heart was filled with pity for them, and he healed those who were ill. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So today in our Worship in the Wilderness theme, we're thinking about a sacrificial journey. And sacrifice is not a popular term to speak about. Our lives are hard enough, busy enough, without the extra struggle of choosing to go without something we feel we need. Perhaps some have made a sacrifice over Lent to not enjoy something which they usually have in their lives, whether that be chocolate, alcohol or social media. Has that been difficult? Does God demand that we give things up for him or choose difficult, sacrificial paths in order to please him? In order to understand what sacrifice means, we turn to that first reading that we read on screen from chapter 53 of Isaiah and the prophet's well-known descriptions of the suffering servant. Isaiah foretold hundreds of years before the birth of Jesus of a type of Messiah who was not the strong and powerful leader which Jesus' contemporaries were expecting. Sometimes the text was thought to represent the nation of Israel and its suffering. But later the New Testament writers understood it to be about Jesus. Jesus, the man of sorrows. We already thought about last week how Jesus meets us in our different states of anguish and distress. And yet we read in this chapter that Jesus does more than just provide us with a shoulder to cry on. The journey of Jesus himself was one of sorrow as he traveled through the wilderness of this world, a journey which ultimately took him to the very epicenter of wilderness, the cross. Isaiah prophesied about Jesus that he was like a root in dry ground, he was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We know that this man of sorrows wept at Lazarus's tomb, wept over the fate of Jerusalem, and mourned the loss of his cousin John the Baptist. And in Matthew 14, we hear that horrible story of John being beheaded. And when Jesus hears the news about his cousin, he takes himself away to a desert place. He chooses to go into the desert to mourn before his heavenly Father. And our God knows intimately the human experience of grief and pain. And this is part of who Jesus is. And Jesus is for us the sacrificial lamb. For Isaiah foretold that the Messiah would not only know our sorrow, but he, he would carry the full weight of our suffering, sin and shame. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. The punishment that brought peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Isaiah's words contain many echoes of the Day of Atonement in Leviticus chapter 16. And that passage from Israel's 40 years in the wilderness tells of how God dealt with their sin one day each year through the death of a sacrificial lamb and the sacrifice of a scapegoat. The priest would place his hands on the head of the goat to transfer the guilt of the people on it and it was then sent away to symbolically carry the weight of all Israel's sin out into the wilderness. The goat will carry on itself all their sins to a solitary place, we are told, to be cut off from the land of the living, suffering for these sins 
so that the people didn't have to. Echoing this story, Isaiah writes, He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgression of my people he was punished. But in order to fully understand and make sense of the cross and of Jesus being the sacrificial lamb, we first need to understand in greater detail that sacrifice and atonement are not theories to be grasped, but a liturgy that is happening at us. To properly understand sacrifice and atonement as a liturgy, we need to revisit the very ancient Jewish liturgy for the Day of Atonement in the First Temple. For this liturgy, the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies. And before the high priest went into the Holy of Holies, they would sacrifice a bull or a calf in expiation of their own sins, for the purging of their own sins. Then they would go into the Holy of Holies, taking one of two animals, a lamb, which was the Lord, and a goat that was Azazel, the devil. And they would take the first with them into the Holy of Holies and sacrifice it to the Lord. And with the blood, they would sprinkle the mercy seat and all that was in that first temple that represented the creation and the throne on which were the cherubim. And the Holy of Holies was the place that only the high priest was allowed to enter. And now the interesting thing is that after expiating their own sins with the bull, they would don a white robe, which was the robe of an angel. And from that point, the high priest would cease to be a human and would become the angel, the one of whose name was the Son of God. Never use a tablet when you should be using paper to read your sermon from. <laughs> and so after putting on the white robe, after becoming that angel, they would then be able to put on the name, meaning the name which could not be pronounced, the name of God. And with the name contained in a phylactery. Now you often see it when, there we are, there's a picture there when Jewish people are praying, particularly the men, and often it would be tied either around the arm or, as we see in the picture, on the forehead. And this would enable them to go into the Holy Holies. Now, if you think about our Eucharistic service, one of the last lines in the Sanctus is, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And this is reference to that particular act in the rite of atonement, the coming in of the high priest. And so the high priest becomes an angel, the son of God, and they sacrifice the lamb that is the Lord and sprinkle the Lord's blood about the place. And the purpose of this was to remove all the impurities and the lingering aftermath of sin that had accrued in what was meant to be the microcosm of creation. Because the holy of holies in the understanding of the temple, was the place where the Creator dwelt. And the temple was the creation, our world. And the rite of atonement was about the Lord himself, the Creator, emerging out from the Holy of Holies and moving out from beyond the temple veil into our existence, so as to set the people free from their impurities, sin and transgressions. In other words, the whole rite was exactly the reverse of what we typically imagine sacrifice and atonement to be about. For we tend to have a bit of an Aztec imagination, 
as regarding sacrificial systems. We seem to be under this misapprehension that the priest is sacrificing to appease the gods in order to create creation flowing. But the Jewish priestly rites were already enormously advanced beyond that world. Understood correctly, we see it was God from the very beginning who was doing the work. That it was God who is wanting to come out and to restore creation out of his love for God's people. And so it is God who emerges from the Holy of Holies in order to forgive the people their sin, and more importantly, to allow creation to flow through the Creator's blood that cleans up the mess, the evil and the pollution that our sin has caused. This was a divine moment, a self-sacrifice on God's part to set people free. This was not, as in the Aztec understanding, a priest satisfying a divinity. God enters into the world, the created world, and sets creation free. And as for the second goat, what became of that? Well, within the liturgy, as heard, the person who was bearing the sins that had been accumulated, the high priest places them on the head of what we call the scapegoat, Azazel, which would then be driven to the edge of a cliff and cast down where it would be killed so that the people's sin would be taken away. Although not necessarily animal cruelty free or something that could be approved by the vegan society, what amazes me is that even at that time in human history, it was understood that salvation was not about humans trying desperately to satisfy God, but God taking on the initiative of trying to break through for us. In other words, sacrifice and atonement was something of which we were the beneficiaries, not God's honour. That is why in talking about Jesus' sacrifice and atonement on the cross, we are talking about a liturgy rather than a theory. We are talking about something that we undergo over time as part of a loving divine initiative towards us. Whatever wilderness you are struggling with at this time, know that God comes out to meet you. Know that Jesus has borne the pain of that struggling on his shoulders on the cross. Jesus has become our scapegoat, carrying our sin, our struggles, our sorrows. Jesus goes out into the wilderness of judgment all alone, so that ultimately we may all be forgiven, healed, restored, and made whole through his blood that nullifies our sin and purifies creation. So what about the sacrifices that we are called to make? Well, in the book of Hebrews, there is a good place to start, to begin to find in the New Testament a help for our understanding of how Jesus continues and concludes the story of the Old Testament. And in Hebrews chapter 10, the writer describes how Jesus, as our high priest, completely fulfills all that the Day of Atonement was pointing to. That Jesus is the one final sacrifice for all sin, and that, by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. We cannot make ourselves right with God. Only Jesus has done that. Therefore, any sacrifices that we bring today are not given in order to earn God's favour. And yet the writer to the Hebrews does say that there are sacrifices that we are called to make. We are called to make sacrifices of praise and sacrifices of doing good, of challenging injustice and in sharing with others. In Hebrews chapter 13, we see these words. 
Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. The sacrifice we bring is the sacrifice of response. And seeing how Jesus has dealt with our sorrow, sin and shame, we are inspired and empowered to bring our praise and our service. We can worship God with our lips in songs and prayers. And we can worship God with generosity and compassion towards other people. Amen. Now we affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We now come to our intercessions. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us present our intercessions to the Father. Heavenly Father, as we think of your Son sacrificing himself on the cross to save us all, we give thanks for all those people who have made sacrifices throughout the pandemic for the benefit of everyone in society. We think not only of the obvious examples such as medical staff, emergency services and research scientists, but of the enormous number of people whose jobs we take for granted and are often overlooked, but have been essential to keeping the country running throughout this crisis. With the first anniversary of the start of lockdown on Tuesday, we think of everyone who has been isolating or shielding over the last year. We pray that the vaccine programme will be successful and it'll, it will give them both the protection and confidence to allow some form of normality to return to their lives. Lord, hear us. Lord of creation, it is all too easy for us to be dragged down by the stresses and strains of our daily lives and the restrictions that the pandemic has placed upon us, making us miss the wonder of new life as spring begins to burst around us. Help us to lift up our eyes and hearts to the glory of all that you have created, to give thanks for the beauty of our world and the wisdom to appreciate and protect it. Lord, hear us. Merciful God, we pray for all people who live lives of suffering and anguish as a result of war and conflict. We think of the people of Myanmar praying that the current political turmoil in their country can be resolved democratically without further loss of life. We think also of the people caught up in the many forgotten wars around the world, in particular in the Yemen and Syria. Lord, hear us. Eternal Lord, we pray for our clergy team, Patrick, Steve, Kay and Phil, for Douglas, our director of music, and our audiovisual team. The last year has been a very difficult, tiring and stressful time for them as they have had to continually adapt and learn new skills 
in order to deliver, deliver services against an ever-changing COVID-affected landscape. As Easter approaches, one of the busiest periods in the church calendar, give them the strength and energy to bring your message of spirit, hope and love to all who attend our services, whether in person or online. As we restart services with the congregation next week, we pray that all the, who enter our churches will always feel welcome and find warmth in the fellowship and friendship of our church community. Lord, hear us. Loving Father, we pray for all those who have suffered from mental illness issues. Pour your spirit upon them that they may find peace despite their distress. We also pray for all those suffering illness or pain, and in particular, we offer up our prayers for Wendy and Sam Datta and David Laverty. We remember those who have died, especially at this time, Laura Lee Farmer, Violet Clifford and Angela Farr, and in years mind, Reginald Timms. We think of their bereaved families and friends and pray that in their anguish and distress, they will find comfort in knowing that their loved ones are at peace in your loving embrace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we come to the peace, which can reach us wherever we are, alone or together, and reach deep into our hearts and give us consolation if we are finding things difficult. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
The Lord is here. He is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and singing. We praise and thank you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you, he broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Remembering that we receive these gifts both spiritually and physically. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen.
Lord God, you have renewed us with the living bread from heaven. By it you nourish our faith, increase our hope and strengthen our love. Teach us always to hunger for him who is the true and living bread and enable us to live by every word that proceeds out of your mouth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others as you were the servant of all and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. Now we come to the notices and um, I hope you're sitting comfortably because there's a lot today. But the first one, the most important, and we'll get a slide up for that, is that today is Census Day. Now, for those of you who are online, you might recognise this as the point where you can start your census. But for those who are not able to do it online, there is help and you can ring up and you can get a paper copy, which hopefully many of you will already have done. You can perhaps get a family member to help you over the phone if there's some difficult questions. And so please do your best to fill this in because the services we receive from the community, the councils and the government could well be affected by the numbers of people that they see in each of the different categories. So it's our chance to show who we are. You will have heard during the prayers that you can book a place for Palm Sunday, next Sunday's services. 10 o'clock in Holy Trinity and 9.30 in the villages. And there are people there who are used to booking your place by now. And so you can um, contact them during the week. And then there'll be Easter services, both here as a walkthrough and in the villages. So we have a lot to look forward to. Now you will also have heard that the 23rd of March is the National Day of Reflection. This marks the first anniversary of the UK lockdown. We will commemorate this tragic loss of life and stand together with everyone who is grieving. It's organised by Marie Curie and the National Day of Reflection looks to reflect on our collective loss, support those who've been bereaved and hope for a brighter future. Holy Trinity Church will be open for prayer from 11 a.m. to 12 noon, when a minute's silence will be held to commemorate the tragic loss of life this past year. The church bell will then be tolled for each person who's died in the Stratford-upon-Avon district, which is 252 at the time that we wrote this. And now your opportunity to, to help decorate this church for Easter. The flower team would like to fill the church with lilies to celebrate our risen Lord. If you would like to donate towards the lilies in memory of a loved one, or just because you feel like you'd like to, we would be extremely grateful. Donations can be made either by cheque, made payable to Stratford-upon-Avon PCC, and posted to the, the parish centre letterbox marked Easter lilies, or you can put um, with your dedication, so you can say who you like it to be in memory of, and you can also pay by direct debit, and I believe the bank account details come up at the end of this service, but they're in the pew sheet this week. So now if that's enough of the notices, you will be able to join us with Zoom coffee at 12, um, 11.15 and the, the link should have been sent out during this service. So we have our next hymn, Lift High the Cross.
Now we come to the blessing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks for the sacrifice of Jesus that takes away the sins of the world and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and upon those you love now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.